Brown's definition of an artist is intentionally broad so that it can encompass artists and creatives. This work may not have been reflected in the traditional nonprofit arts system. So we are looking for ways to uh, embrace those creative voices that we don't often get to see, even though they may have had a legacy in history within their communities. Next slide. So the ways that you can uh, tell us about yourself um, is that you can one, provide a narrative bio, that's 250 words maximum, and that would be provided through the text box in submittable. You can also submit your resume or a CV. Both of those formats need to be two pages, limited, limited and as a PDF. Submittable will allow a large possibility of Word files. So you just need to text, uh, just need to check to make sure that you have the right format. Um, uh, of all of these three, they are all weighed equally. So it's not one is above another or has more weight than another. They're all going to be viewed equally. Um, with the resume, you're welcome to use it as well as a CV. Uh, we do not want to overburden you as the creative individual going through the, ad, um, the application process. So we're not trying to generate more work for you. I think the one thing that you do need to keep in mind if you're submitting a resume or CV is does it align with the narrative that you're giving us? So the description and the, the work samples that you're providing, does the resume and your CV support, uh, support your application? Um, this is not a job application. So we're really looking for how are you defining these things and how are you telling us your story about your life as a creative? Next slide, please. This is the only section that requires a written response. And I think that's really important to know um, and, and the value of it uh, in, the, in this application process. Uh, certainly you can cut and paste from other sources that you have about yourself. So that could include your CV, your resume, or if you already have a bio that you're going to tailor for this particular application, you're more than welcome. The, um, the reason that it's written though is Understanding yourself and your work and reevaluating that at different points in your in your life or within a year are very important. They help you get a better grasp of who you are as an artist and what is it that is rising to the surface in this moment. As many artists, we evolve. Um, where I was in an art, as an artist 20 years ago is not where I am now. And so demonstrating that arc and understanding how I've changed and you know, my own growth um, in my practice is really important. And also we hope that if, you're, if you choose to write a bio that uh, it's going to give you um, something that you can source again for other things. So that could be uh, another grant opportunity, it could be for a program, it could be for a press release or an exhibit. All of these things require um, a bio. It could even be for your own website. So we hope that you will find value in going through the process if you choose to. Again, it's not for us to make it burdensome for you as, um, as the applicant. What are we looking for? I'm really actually excited about this part because um, BAMF is giving you great agency here. Uh, rather than giving you a laundry list of things to include, which many applications do, uh, you it's what do you want to tell us? What is important uh, for you making a case for yourself as an artist through your narrative and the way that you provide services or honor your own communities. Um, how is it that you define your service and how do you see yourself working and moving through the community that has given, um, um, that has sprouted roots for you or that has given um, something back uh, in a, a constructive and creative way uh, also, how, is, how do you demonstrate or show that you have had sustainability of your own work? 
So again, it's very, very broad. And the things that are listed here are just a place to start, but not the end all of what you're doing. You know, BAMF does not have a strict de definition of what your service and support actually looks like. And again, it's so that we can embrace a larger community of creatives. So here are the, you know, things to consider, including uh, your creative career. You have uh, things that you would like to say about that, certainly um, how you've been recognized in the communities that you're involved in, um, that you have and can show consistency in your work and your practice, if there's some growth there or arc, if you will, um, that, that you are using your, um, your voice as a creative in your practice and that you can tell us in a clear way or that you can give us the authentic vision of yourself. Uh, things that you don't or, or that are not as important to think about is this is not a job application really focus on the uh, where the narrative, the work samples and your bio come together. So what is the story you're telling us? Uh, your self-awareness as a creative. Do you know your own story? Again, another great reason to talk about and work on your bio and actually have other people help you with that. Uh, we do not all, we do not see need to see a laundry list of all the things you've done and all the awards that you've seen since the beginning of time. You can really focus in on um, uh, you can talk about certainly early works, but maybe that evolution of how that's changed for you, or if you work in different mediums and that's really important, something that you would like to express to us, or if you work with um, reinventing um, uh, spaces uh, through movement, music, theater, those are things that you can share and the places that you've done that, but you certainly don't need to list everything, just the things that you feel speak to this this application. Next. So again, um, be mindful of the story that you're telling us, that the things in the narrative description and the work samples um, correlate with what you're describing in your bio. You're, these are three different ways for us to get a sense of, of who you are as a creative person, and how um, you're wanting to share what you've done through, uh, through your communities. All right, so I'm gonna pass it over to um, Sebastian. Thank you so much, yeah. Sophia. I'm going to attempt to like uh, flesh out a, a couple of these ideas to make sure that we get like a, a full understanding of what we'll be looking at here. Um, going back to, to that, those ideas about uh, professionalization and uh, you know that this is not a job interview. We are looking for authentic representation. We are looking to build something where you feel that you can present yourself in a way that makes the most sense for your practice and yourself, your, your being. Um, in other words, we're not asking you to code switch, you know? So you can, uh, you have to pick between the CV, the resume, the bio, whatever you're most comfortable with, and you go with that. Now you will be presenting a sort of account of um, what I would call your public practice. You know, we've been using the word career, but again, it's really, it doesn't need to involve like social security numbers and W9s. If you have any sort of like artistic public practice uh, that is again, recognized by one or several communities, that's what, that's what we're talking about. And we're asking for the highlights and the way that you define them. You know, what are the most important things that you've done? What are the most meaningful things that you've done? Those are the things that are to be included in the bio, the CV, or the resume. Um, so, of course, the uh, awards, uh, you know, a big commissions, those things count, but they are not the be all and end all. Um, because, again, knowing your story 
different things might resonate uh, on a different level for you. And these are the stories we want to hear. We want, we want, oh, you can go on to the next slide. Thank you. Um, so, yes. So, like a, an example is this idea of service and support. Uh, we are looking to sort of uh, award others that have had a meaningful impact on their BIPOC communities. And that would mean that sometimes, you know, like uh, achievements are valued and understood and recognized differently. And so we are all working together here to sort of uh, help create that understanding. Um, if we can have the next slide, we can have some more details on that. So these are some examples, um, you know, we can talk in terms of mentorship, in terms of uh, community building, in terms of driving change, in terms of caregiving. Um, how does, how do those things meet your sort of like that public practice? How do those things meet your, um, uh, life as an artist. Now, I wanted to clarify again, because this has come up, we do not mean that we are solely looking at um, social practice artists. Of course, we are looking at social practice artists. Uh, they're, they're very much welcome to apply, and we're looking forward to that. But we are looking at any sort of public practice, no matter how um, sort of a focus or exploded, uh, traditional or avant-garde, um, these things, the mentorship, uh, the community building, the, the change driving, all that, it, we're talking about it connecting to your practice, not necessarily always being your practice. So when you are presenting, when you are putting these documents together, um, keep in mind that, as Sophia mentioned before, this is not a job interview, um, but you need to be concise and your choices matter, but they are very much your choices. We are talking about you, um, just in the same way that you make decisions in your practice about you know uh, how you present yourself and how you present your artwork, you make the decision on how you come across, um, how you're most comfortable. And we are working together here in a spirit of openness and acceptance. Um, yes. So remember, link your CV, your bio, your resume, please link it to the face that you present elsewhere in your application. And otherwise your work samples, uh, your history of service, your support letters, et cetera. Um, we shouldn't be seeing like 80 different versions of yourself. Use uh, clear language. I would, I would almost say uh, lean towards clarity instead of flavor. I know I've been guilty uh, in the past. Guilty is maybe the wrong word. I've had a mug preference myself as an artist to prioritize flavor over clarity. Um, and again, I'm asking you to be authentic. So if that is a sort of part of your practice, we're open. It can be discussed. But again, you're not necessarily okay. trying to sort of like key in to what a culture is. Usually when you apply to something, and I think we've, um, those of us that have had many application experiences know that there's a sort of like weird game that you play where you try to key into what's the culture over there and how do I respond to it? How do I sort of like morph myself into um, that body? But not only is it's not part of the ethos of BAM, but we're so brand new, we don't have a culture yet. Not like that. So you can even pull it off if you wanted to. So like, forget about all that and concentrate on what is, what 
are the salient parts of your life as an artist? What is the important part of your practice, both to the public at large and to you yourself? As Sophia said earlier, what is your story? What are the specifics of your story? Um, one important thing I always like to share with artists, I know many of you are not word people, you know, um, and this can get frustrating, but please remember, we are speaking about community building and sort of uh, being part of a community. Just because it's your story doesn't mean you need to one, you need to be the one and only to put pen to paper. You know, feel free to collaborate with any sort of like uh, writer friends that you may have that might help you craft the best CV, resume, bio. Um, it's something that I even recommend to sort of like my art majors in terms of they have to produce many statements over the course of their, their college career. And you kind of have to remember them. It's not cheating to have somebody else to sort of like form out the writing. You know, it's like, you know the essentials, you know, uh, there's, no, there's no shame in having a ghostwriter. You know what I'm saying? Um, or just like build at least from feedback, you know, take your time with this. Um, again, I think we all have certain instincts and certain habits and you don't have to live there. You know, as we are sort of like questioning our, our own approach every day and how to best service community. Um, yes, please remember this is about you and this is about sort of like your BIPOC homes and let's let's find a way all to be as authentic as possible, you know. Um, we have on the screen right now, a couple of examples of uh, first and third person, uh, you know, and, and I mean, this is, this right here goes to what I was mentioning because for, the professional um, bio, it is almost frowned upon. It's pretty much frowned upon to usually write it in the first person. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that this is gonna be used later and plugged in by like uh, the spaces or the schools into sort of like PL packages. But again, we're not worried about PL packages. Uh, that's not what we're about first person, third person, whatever you're most comfortable with, whatever makes most sense, you know, we are interested in the narrative. We're interested in clarity. Um, we're not interested in markers of sort of like respectability or uh, professionalization. So hopefully uh, we've clarified a few things for y'all and uh, remember that you can always reach us throughout the process. Um, and we're glad to answer any of your questions and your considerations also as we're building this together. Thank you, Spence, and, and thank you, Sophia, for, for all this. And I think that what I also just want to uplift is that part of um, part of the charge for the BIPOC Arts Network and Fund is for us to uplift and celebrate what the community already has and what is already here in the community. And and as Sebastian and Sophia have already mentioned, we as as artists, as organizers, as administrators and, and professionals of color, we some of us have been conditioned in order to not shine and um, like and share our truth and 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 have been conditioned that um, that truth or being being a person of color or being um, uh, being an artist who has a like a, who has a cultural history um, has been has been frowned upon in terms of sharing that. That's not part, one of the things that like is necessary for the BIPOC Arts Network and Fund. I think that it is something where you we encourage people to share what is important for. Um, for you 
and and actually we hope that it is part of our our point of collecting the data collecting the information to share back to our larger communities here are here are the number of artists here's how they represent here's how they show themselves and this is something that we can celebrate and not just and not just with the 25 artists but also throughout all of the applications um so um just a just to um, expand a little bit, um, I'm really excited for you as applicants coming to this. I have been in the arts community a very long time. Even in our um, uh, pre-discussions about what this session would look like, uh, it really came to mind how different this is. Um, many of the grants that I have um, applied for um, in different situations have had more rigid guidelines. And exactly what Sebastian said about forming myself or trying to figure out what do they want to hear and how do I fit into this box. But for me as a Latina, along with that came the, as many of the grants I was applying for at different points were doing affirmative action, which I benefited from, and also from um, uh, being colorblind. So uh, those kinds of, um, ways of how do you speak about yourself when you're eliminating part of yourself in the conversation. Uh, at the time when I applied, some of the things were, oh, we're colorblind. Don't mention that you're Athena. Don't mention that, you know, uh, anything about your, um, your background. Stick to the facts. Facts are great, but it's not a complete picture. And I think Banff is really trying to get a complete picture of yourself as a creative. So um, I hope that's helpful. The, um, the uh, other uh, types of applications that are very, very rigid, uh, again, um, require you to bend and omit things that, you, that are really part of the essence of your story. This is Hank here. Um, I do wanna share a question that came in from an anonymous attendee about different kinds of service. Uh, let y'all, one of y'all take this question. It asks, can one discuss how one is more than one of those categories? The categories are really meant to sort of clarify. You know, again, we're not being strict about it. It's not as if you, you have to be it's like, well, I'm, I'm mostly a connector. I, I sort of like help build community. Um, I think there is a lot of overlap in any action that we might take. Um, so the categories exist more as clarifiers rather than, again, the sort of box that you feel that you have to fit yourself into. With, um, you know, uh, as we were, again, Banff, myself as an artist, um, we are all evolving and trying to embrace more instead of sticking with the way things have always been. How do we really elevate uh, more creative individuals and give them agency um, within this process. Uh, something that Sebastian had um, discussed, uh, the mentor, the connector, the leader, the caregiver, just going to put some other words in there too. If you're a mentor, that means you've provided a service of giving advice and guiding others. If you're a connect, if you're find yourself in the connectors um, part, that means you help build and maintain community. So maybe, maybe that building of community is starting a book club where you are the regular host, where you're inviting people to come in, where you're, you know, have these um, uh, discussions about writing, poetry, art, you know, whatever it is, but that it's ongoing and it's not just for yourself, but it's also to involve and um, spread more information about something that is important to you or dear to you. And it also gives back to the community. If you see yourself as a leader, you're, you're advocating to drive change. So this could be that you're organizing, you know, concerts or public events that maybe help raise money for, um, for a natural disaster. Uh, lots of groups um, did performances to raise money um, for Hurricane Harvey. Uh, there's probably groups right now getting together to raise money for those that, in Pasadena that have just experienced uh, destruction of tornadoes and uh, this tornado that's come through. So there's a lot of ways that uh, you can 
uh, um, be a leader in your community that's not necessarily, oh, I'm going to show my, I'm, you know, creating a, uh, an art exhibit uh, then, uh, type of giving. The, the last one is um, caregivers and healers. Um, this is a focus on long-term health and well-being. So ways that you can demonstrate that perhaps you see yourself as a caregiver, that you've been doing this a long time, is that you, you offer meditation, yoga classes on a regular basis in public spaces within your community. So this could be a park. This could be a multi-purpose center. It could be you know, um, at a church, but that it's been ongoing and it's really to maintain um, um, community and help for, for those that are in the community. Um, I think um, some of them cross over. Uh, one of the um, thoughts that we had generated as a possible way to demonstrate service is, um, is if, you, uh, if you create opportunity for, um, for various ceremonies. And ceremonies are really important to a lot of cultures and communities. So those, whatever kind of ceremony that is that you are, you know, you're providing that. I feel like when you're doing something like that, it's you're both being a caregiver as well as um, a connector. So it's not one or the other, or that some of these things are gonna be in just one category. You have to have something from each category. We're just trying to share ways that you can talk about yourself and your work and your and how you move creatively through these. Services. Thanks, Sophia. I think you know, I think that again, we we are providing these ideas and examples and and these categories in response to um, some some questions that others have, have posed to us in terms of wanting something more concrete. And um, and so we're, we're giving you these examples, but we also want to make sure that these this is not a list that you all have to check off. This is not a prescriptive list. These are our places in which like that we have come up with some like some ideas from all the community consultants and some of our, 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 our folks and say, here's some examples. And, and Sebastian is great. And like, here's some here's some categories as how to think through that examples use be creative around this utilize it as like as inspiration and not as prescription um again also in terms of this and like you know i and 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 just i i don't know i i think that is answered there's application support please use the worksheet because i we know that submittable is not necessarily easy to navigate all the time but the worksheet actually gives you like um all the questions all the things there on a PDF that you get to like um, answer and you can answer offline without actually having to be online on that, that part. Um, Did we, this question get answered about, um, can we submit both a bio and CV or do we need to yep. only select one? Select one. I think that we've added that you, make, you need to make a choice. I also need like part of that is that we need to be not, like mindful of our readers and our reviewers who are also community members and that part of the thing is that we want to make sure that you also can edit you can you can focus your story and that they are actually hearing the story that you want to provide in in, in one place so it is part of that process um yeah i think that actually thank you perry like there's ways in which the communities have collaborated and 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 this work the work for the BIPOC Box Network and Fund that we are investing in in you all and in organizations that are building a stronger Houston and a greater and more diverse Houston. And that is what we are continuing to try to support and 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 make happen through these awards and through the recognition and and the celebration of the artists who are able to to, to provide the support to our communities and to each other. And um, and we hope that that's an opportunity for you all to to see your own work, to see what you have done. In, in new light and actually be excited about that in ways that um, that gives you new opportunities and, 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 and new ways of thinking about how you just show up and do this work. Y'all y'all do an awful lot for each other and for, for our communities. This is a place in where you get to celebrate that, we hope. Other questions, other thoughts? Again, um, we will excerpt some of these videos in order to put these on the support desk and FAQs. Um, look, y'all, we have put a lot of information on the, uh, on the support desk. 
all the questions that people have posed through all the information sessions, we've tried to be very conscientious and, and name those questions and, and be conscientious about the responses. I also can say that our support desk might be a little overwhelming because we've given you an awful lot of words, but really think about those questions, look at it, it is, and, 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 and utilize it as a resource about all this information. These works, these information sessions, um, the, the support desk is an opportunity in order to help guide you through multiple stages of this process. Be authentic. Take the opportunity in order to share, share your, true, your, your work in, in this place so that we as a BIPOC Arts Network and Fund can actually like celebrate that and share that with, with our partners, with our collaborators, and know that when people ask us what Houston can be, we can actually say, here are the hundreds of artists who are doing this exciting work. And it is exemplified by these 25 awardees. And those 25 awardees are actually in community with each and every one of you all. There are no, there are no previous applications. There are no previous awards. This is, this is a first time opportunity. So there is no examples about this that we can share. Um, I think that that's the part where um, we're asking you all to be the authentic selves during this first round. We will have, like, you know, in the next round in 18 months, that'll be a whole different story that we'll have some other examples and, and, and stories. But at this point, um, that, I'm sorry, that, that, that we are, we're building a new in this, in this space. Oh, okay. So you mean your artist support statements? Um, yes, yes, and so they can do all of that aspect in terms of your support statements. Um, I think one of the things for us is that your your artist support statements should be um, an opportunity in order to talk about how your service shows up in the community, and that they're the, they're the ones they're your super fans, they're your advocates, they're the people who actually understand what that looks like, um, and that could be people who actually have like supported your your work. And in this way, in order to show this up, or they can be the people who received that like that information or were collaborators on that aspect. However, but those statements of support are intentioned to to fill out like you know and, and to, to make sure that we are looking at those as making sure that what you all are saying actually like rings true outside of just you. Unfortunately, I need to take off. But um, I know that the other people might be here in order to be able to hang out for a second, but um, thank you all for your support and um, look forward to reading your applications. So, uh, Sebastian, I will stay on for a little bit longer. If you have any questions, just send us send them our way. Um, the, I do, I think that, well, obviously this is going to be uh, available to you um, on the BAMP website, so you can um, reference it later. Um, and I think also um, the slides will be available so you can read them again in more detail. Again, those are samples. It's not an exact science. And, you know, really you have, an, you have a lot of agency here. And, and while we're hanging out waiting for questions, I'd like to, to remind the people that are here, uh, tell your friends about us. And I know I know the reality is that this is competitive because we can only award 25 artists. But you know, in that spirit of community, I feel that um, a lot of brilliant artists in the city have not really heard of what Banff is doing. So, you know, share the love. So um, I think one thing I learned about Sebastian, and I also think it's a really great tool that he mentioned, um, other people may see uh, and remind you when you're writing or putting together your resume and CV, things that strike, strike them that are important that you're leaving out. It's always a great idea to have someone that knows you and is familiar with your work to look over your, um, your bio, CV, resume, what you're submitting. Uh, it really helps um, them say, hey, but don't forget to mention how great you are and what you've done here, or don't forget about this. It does help. 
in the samples, um, whether you just choose to write in first person or third person, if you're writing a bio narrative, uh, they, they have a different feel. Uh, the samples that are on the slide are from um, artists that are not, um, uh, that have not followed a traditional trajectory. So, uh, so those are really great um, links. You can go back and, and click on them. I think you should be able to, or I can put, a, I'll put the links to both of those artists in the, um, in the chat. So if you wanna read more about them, uh, one of them is again done in third person and the other one is in first person. Uh, they're much longer, but it gave me a better sense of the artist and why do they do this work and what is important about this work and also that the artwork was um, different. One of them is a quilt maker. The work is amazing. It's just amazing and fantastic, but it also stems from a legacy within her community of, of quilt makers and and how that has um, carried through up to the present. So bringing that story along and weaving it into, if you will, her own story I, was a, very important to telling who she is and how she came to be um, this uh, this creative in the community. This is Hank here. And I have yeah. a question that we've received that I'd like to share with y'all uh, yes. from an anonymous attendee who is asking, is it okay to advocate for another artist? even though we are also applying. Absolutely. Uh, there are the, the specifics of, I would say, uh, instances where you would have like uh, conflicts of interest uh, also spelled out in the, uh, on the website, on the Banff website. And they have more to do with sort of like members of Banff, like advocating for, for people. but you yourselves, you know, if you want, if you, it, you know, if you want to make it a love fest, apply and support at the same time, I think it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, there's nothing against it. Well, if we want to receive another question in the next couple of minutes. We'll uh, close it down, but I'm gonna wait for just another minute. All right. And thank everyone for attending. <laughs> well, if you, if you have questions later, remember, we have a help desk, you know, you, any question that you have about this that comes up like five, 10, minutes or days after the fact, it's like, we'll still be here to answer them. All right, well, I guess let's go ahead and uh, wrap it up. Um, and thank you, everyone. I'm going to do, uh, close this down and uh, we'll get this recording up online within the next day. Take care. All right, see you all later. Thank you and good luck. <laughs> <laughs>